Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Trilby, and welcome to my review of Disney Pixar's latest animated movie, Coco, directed by Lee Unkrick and written by Adrian Molina and Matthew Aldrich. And if you're wondering why it's taken me so long to see Coco, well, it didn't come out in the UK until a couple of weeks ago. Coco follows a young boy called Miguel, played by Anthony Gonzalez, who loves music and wants nothing more to be a famous musician and play his guitar and sing music, who idolises a musician named Ernesto de la Cruz, voiced by Benjamin Bratt. But Miguel's family have banned music. They are a shoemaking family business, and they have banned music because years ago, their great-great-grandmother Coco was in love with a musician who ran away from home to pursue his dreams and left her behind. But on the Mexican Day of the Dead, Miguel becomes cursed, and he has to find Ernesto de la Cruz in order to get back to the human world. And on the way, he meets con artist Hector, voiced by Gail Garcia Bernal, who joins him on the adventure to try and get him home. And it's with Miguel and Hector that the film kind of neatly folds into the traditional Pixar our template. Because if you look at almost every single Pixar movie, apart from Cars 3, The Good Dinosaur, and Brave, and a couple of others, you have a film about two central characters whose personalities conflict, and they have to go on a reluctant adventure in order to get what they want. And for the first two acts of Coco, it does play out like a rather traditional Pixar film, and also just a traditional adventure buddy film. The Land of the Dead is incredibly well realised, vibrant, colourful, it's so imaginative and great to see explored. And the characters are really engaging, Hector is a lot of fun, Miguel is a really charming lead and someone who you really want to follow. And the Mexican inspired character designs and the art style is really great to see in 3D and just so imaginative and it's something we don't really see in mainstream cinema that often. Part of me actually wishes we could have explored the land of the dead a little bit more than we actually do but it's still just a great visual feast for the eyes. And it's a compelling adventure for the first two acts but if the film just stuck with that template then I don't think we'd be talking about it and praising it as much as we actually actually are in terms of, you know, the critical circles and awards consideration. What really cements Coco for me, and I won't spoil anything, is the directions the story took in the third act. I genuinely did not see some of the twists and turns coming. I had no idea how Miguel and Hector were going to get out of their respective scenarios and conflicts. And the way the film resolves itself in the themes of loss and death is, is kind of akin to Kubo and the Two Strings from a couple of years ago, which incidentally was one of my favourite films of that year. It all culminates in this incredibly emotional ending, which is kind of what you expect with director Lee Uncrick, who directed Toy Story 3. And the closing moments of the film are incredibly heartwarming and wonderful to see, and just the storyboarding and the, the cinematography and how the camera swoops in for, the, for those closing moments, it's, it's really wonderful. I had tears of joy and happiness and also sadness, because death is complex and sad and happy, and Coco is able to embody all of those themes into a wonderful package for all ages to enjoy. And on top of that, you've got this incredibly wonderful soundtrack done by the people who did Frozen, which ties it all together in both a production sense and also a thematic sense, because music is at the key to this film. Once again, much like Kubo and the Two Strings, and the song Remember Me is a great standalone song, and is performed really, really well by Benjamin Bratt in one version, but it's the version that's delivered by Anthony Gonzalez that really delivers the emotional punch. If there's anything I didn't really like about Coco, it's that it takes a little bit too long for the film to reveal its hand. Like I said, for the first two acts of the film, it's a really well polished and really well executed version of the Buddy Adventure movie, but it sticks so rigidly to that template for about 60 to 70 minutes of the film that when the twist finally happens, I was kind of waylaid because it took so long to get to that sort of interesting twist. And you also have the comic relief animal sidekick character Dante, who's this street dog. It's so nakedly a merchandising cash grab, Dante adds almost nothing to the movie, and the slapstick with him isn't even that interesting, noteworthy, or funny. But while my own Dante critique is more of a legitimate problem with the movie, in my eyes at least, the rigidness to which Coco sticks to formula for the first two acts of the film might not even be that big of an issue because we rarely see this sort of movie with an entirely Mexican cast. It kind of reminds me of the 2012 movie Red Tails, which was a film co-directed by George Lucas about a group of African-American Air Force pilots during World War II. And while that film is quite formulaic and it does every war movie cliche in the book, the story of African-American airmen in World War II was a story that was never really told before, so it kind of makes sense for them to do a more formulaic, bare-bones retelling, because they never quite got their story. But still, even if the film didn't have an entire Latino or an entirely Mexican cast, it's still noteworthy because that third act completely justifies everything the first two acts do, and makes Coco, in my opinion, a truly exceptional film. 
I don't know if it would crack my personal Pixar top 5, but it's still high up in the rankings. It's still a brilliant animated movie that I highly recommend you guys go and watch. I give Coco 4.5 stars out of 5. Hey folks, thanks so much for watching this video, and oh my goodness, who are these names? Who are these awesome, really cool people? Well, they are my patrons. They help to keep the lights on here at Trooper Reviews. They get early access to some of my content, and also including my podcast, the Film Brits podcast. They also get to be a part of the podcast by asking questions and submitting topics and such. So if you would like to help support the content, and also get involved in the podcast and other videos, and also get your names in the credits like these handsome devils, then please consider becoming a patron. Links in the description below.